boy, boy. Um, uh, obviously, a lot of people <clears throat> want me to comment on uh, some of the things that Dave Landau asserted about his uh, time on the Stephen Crowder show. I want to be obviously first transparent in that. I don't think it would be fair. I don't know if Stephen's going to appreciate me covering this or not. Um, but I think in order to uh, remain impartial or remain um, ethical, I feel like it's big news. And I would cover it if it was happening at the Daily Wire, right? If Matt Walsh came out or someone that left the Daily Wire, even though I'm not friends with anybody that works at the Daily Wire, I would cover it. And so I should cover it uh, with Crowder because he's the biggest conservative uh, content creator in the space, basically. Or at least one of, but uh, probably the biggest. Uh, obviously, people know that uh, Stephen and I have had a good relationship. Um, you know, no money has exchanged hands or anything like that. But Stephen's always been good to me. Um, you know, when he was transitioning over to Rumble and stuff like that, I was able to help him out with a few things. The guy doesn't owe me anything for that. I volunteered. I don't think, uh, you know, the fact that he shouted out Coffee Brand Coffee one time means that I can't be critical of him. I think he would understand and respect that. And so uh, anytime you have situations where you have a former employee speaking out, okay, I think that it requires a little bit of nuance. And some of the things that Dave Landau said have not been commented on by Stephen Crowder, which I actually assume he won't. Maybe he will on his show today. But um, some of the things, and I like Dave a lot, some of the things were head scratchers that he said. Uh, some of the things probably happened. And, um, you know, I think we'll dive into it and try to be impartial here. So I think there's enough critiques to go around. I like both guys a lot. I think they're very, very important to the space. And I don't think this, like, destroys either one of their careers. But it does, you know, it just adds a little flavor. Um, so... I think, um, by the way, shout out to Christian Toto. I'd like to get him to work for my site, but he's got his own website. Um, before I get into this, it's Friday. If you haven't picked up um, some coffee, brand coffee, we are fully stocked. Our 15 different organic teas are all in stock. Um, our coffee's all back in stock. Our strawberries and cream is selling ridiculously well. Blueberry cobbler, hazelnut churro. Our cold brew sampler packs, which you can see behind me now, I'm telling you, any one of these flavors of the cold brews, you take the little bag out of the cold brew uh, pack, put it in a um, container overnight, add a little cream to it, and it's so good. Like We've had the Colombian forever, but the Ethiopian and the dark, dark roast are ridiculously good. And now that it's warming up, I think you might like it. Um, you know, and we obviously have decaf, double cap, all that kind of stuff too. So uh, check out, I'll leave a link in the description check out coffee brand coffee and uh, support an American company here. Landau, Steven Crowder censored me, uh, fellow comic and a fellow comic. So this is probably the most concerning claim. Most of the other claims that were made, like, um, you know, at one point in the interview, Dave Landau says, Oh, well he, 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 he wasn't letting me promote my shows, which is just patently incorrect. Um, I saw him promoting a show constantly all the time on that show. Um, but he has now to, in, in Dave's credit to Dave's credit, he has come out and corrected that. Um, Andrea Brown said, hold up straight up. I watched Crowder and have for years. And there's things Dave says in this interview that are pro provably false just by watching any random ap episode, uh, you know, talking about, this is about the promotion. And he wrote, I'm only posting this because it's a common response and misunderstood. He promoted my appearances, these are his stand-up appearances, for a long time, no question. It became a daily battleground behind the scenes when my new contract was thrust upon me. So just some clarification, whether or not it was a problem after that contract was raised uh, or deployed, I don't know. Um, I think in general, if somebody's on your show, you should let them promote their own thing. Um, I don't do a lot of guests on my channel, but if I did, you know, that's like the, I don't know what's the word for it. That's like what you do. You let them, like Tim lets everybody. When I was on Tim's show, he never said, don't promote the, your YouTube channel or don't promote this or that. He never said any of that. 
Um, and that's should be the standard. Or um, sometimes if you go on a podcast, someone will literally say like, hey, what are your plugs? Um, what are the things you want me to mention? And that's the that's the trade off, right? I'm giving, I'm going on your show. I'm providing entertainment for people, and um, you're making money from that. In exchange for that, I'm hoping you'll send people back my way to buy my coffee or maybe join the publica, or whatever the case is that we're talking about. That's just the way it's always worked. And I, as far as I know, it at least worked that way for most of the time um, until the end when things probably got ugly. And um, again, I like both these guys. Um, some of these things are more concerning. So Stephen Crowder said, uh, said when he went public in the Daily Wire contract dispute for a vital reason, the website's initial contract to Crowder valued at $50 million over four years said he'd get paid less if his show got censored by big tech platforms like YouTube. It's why Crowder signed a deal with Rumble, the free speech alternative to YouTube. That kind of censorship Crowder warned cannot stand. Now, former Lauder with Crowder co-host Dave Lando says Crowder routinely censored his commentary on video podcast and worse. Dave Lando opened up the popular show You're Welcome with Michael Malice. He's been in my sphere for a long time. I've never had a conversation with him. I, sh I should. I know he's got a book out to sell, so maybe he should come out and come on my show. I mean, he, digitally. Uh, Lando shared how he knows how to be a co-host in the modern era, witnessed his work alongside Anthony, Anthony Cumia of Compound Media. He similarly supported Crowder during their time together, but in their final months of the professional relationship, Crowder kept Lando on a tight leash. Now, again, sometimes things get contentious in the business. Um, I, I'm trying to give the benefit of the doubt here, but I'm not discrediting uh, Dave Landau because it because of what I'm saying. Like, yeah, things get dicey when money gets involved or when stress is at high level. So these things certainly could have happened. Um, uh, he had censored and things on. I couldn't use certain words, Dave Landau said. The restrictions didn't stop there. Landau alleged that Crowder had a a uh, button to silence him if he spoke too much on the show. Quote, a light was put in the studio if it was his rant button, and it was basically a Dave don't talk button. Landau recalled of both the button and the light that flashed when it was deployed. Uh, when I hit it, I wasn't supposed to talk, and Crowder would press it. I know my job. I know he talks a lot. I know that he's the star of the show. I know that when to sit back, and I did that with Anthony Cumia for years, it's what I do, he said. I'm not trying to steamroll him. Uh, it, it was just, hey, don't be funnier than Crowder. See, this is probably the comedian take on it. I'm looking at this as a content creator, so I understand both sides. Like, as a content creator, if you have, like, a thing going, like, uh, like when Sid and I do our podcast, if she gets on, like, a good rant or I get on a good rant, you want that to, like, go uninterrupted so you have a good clip uh, to share. Um and having a button it doesn't really offend me that much, but I've never had someone push the button on me either. So I get totally get how Dave, who's been doing it for a million years, uh, would be offended by that. So as a content creator, I understand maybe why Steven would want it. And I also understand why Dave Landau would feel like belittled by it because he's saying, hey, look, I know how to do my job. Um, again, to me, I'm not a performer like Dave is so Dave probably felt like, hey man, I know what I'm doing here. You don't need to flash a sign in my face to tell me to shut up. I understand that. But again, I understand where Steven's coming from too. Now, here's how uh, Landau took it though. He said, hey, don't be funnier than Crowder. That's the truth. I don't mean to sound bitter, but I knew it was true because I was pulled aside and it was, quote, make sure if you're doing a rant or you're riffing that he gets the last word, he said. You were told that explicitly, Malice said, and he said, yes. This isn't a great look, um, but it's, the, it's called the Steven Crowder Show. So I'm torn here, you know. Uh, I think, you know, again, this is also hearsay. This is what Dave Landau said. This is not what we know. And again, I'm not trying to just discredit Dave. I like Dave a lot. Um, so it goes on to say, even if I did a funnier joke, if I had a funnier joke, I'd leave it out. It was important for the fans not to hear it. I always thought it was my job as a comedian to leave the good one out, Landau deadpanned. Someone who's as pro-free speech and non-censorship as he was, uh, really about censorship of me, he said he was adding 
I'm adding he was forgiving of the issue due to Crowder's medical woes at the time. Now, I want to go back to the first part where it's where it's about you can't say certain words. I mean, that's what YouTube's rules are, right? Um, I didn't know that particular word. I'm I'm surprised about, uh, but. You know, if it's you know, if it's if it's going to get you banned off of YouTube, the platform that's really important to building other platforms right now, I understand saying like, bro, you just can't say these words. Um, I mean, th- you can't talk about certain topics on the platform. It's it's better now, but you know, there's a time at the beginning of the coup for like even saying certain words will get for sure get an entire video demonetized, um, and also be very highly likely to get you a strike, which means. You now go a week without being able to pay your bills, so uh, or several days or whatever it is. I forget how long it is with the strike, but you get what I mean. Um, so again, as a creator, having some no-no words is not a big deal to me. I understand why he feels like he's being censored, but also that's why Crowder moved to Rumble too. So I understand both sides there too. This just seems like two guys that got big enough that it was time, like Dave got big enough that it was time for him to go. And time for him to go out on his own. And now he's got his own show on The Blaze with Quarter Black Garrett, which I support and will watch. Uh, and I'm looking forward to it. So um, the Michigan native later said that Crowder's sensorial mood extended to fellow comic Matt McClowry. Lando planned a stand-up comedy special. This is a little weird. Uh, in Dallas, and Crowder asked to join the lineup. Lando agreed, knowing that his colleague would help promote it. This is a win-win, obviously. The initial show became two sold-out shows thanks to Crowder's connection. Again, I think everyone knows why that is. He's huge, right? McClowry and off-screen Landau Pal uh, had opened both shows with material that earned a standing ovation. Landau then asked Crowder if McClowry could co-host Louder with Crowder one day when he wouldn't be there. Crowder agreed. Later, Landau learned that McClowry, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that, had been blocked uh, from that guest co-hosting gig without any explanation. Crowder texted and said, what's done is done, according to Lando. What does that even mean? Is it your show? It's your show, Lando said. So there was some confusion. Like somebody inside of Crowder's facility said, hey, uh, actually this isn't happening. And then it sounds like Crowder said behind the scenes, I guess is the assumption that actually this isn't happening. And then Crowder never explained why, according to Dave. We don't know, right? Crowder called Lando up and Lando and yelled at him over the guest hosting issue and related topics. "Quote: He told me he owns me." Lando said of the heated conversation, "It was venomous. I saw a different person that I had heard rumors about." Um, again, I wasn't there. Stephen Crowder has not addressed this. Uh, two coworkers getting angry and fighting—it certainly could happen. Not a good look if it's true. Then he said Matt couldn't do his routine closing bit, which is killer because it's too dirty. If we're going to tour together, he said, there was this projection about how he was angry about how well it did. Uh, a bit, the bit in question was a personal anecdote about his high school wrestling days and his Asperger syndrome. Uh, Crowder allegedly would tell Lando that before their live performances, let's keep it clean, despite the latter's penchant for dark and spicy material why this has been me for 20 years yeah i mean i think that is a little weird if true um you know and i think certainly some of what dave landau is saying is i'm sure true some of it is his own interpretation of how things happened um now lando used the malice appearance to reveal he had signed a deal with blaze tv uh, to start a video podcast sketch series uh which i wish him the best on i really think you know there are things that, you know, that I know that were going on behind the scenes that probably don't paint either one of them in a good light. But I think this just happens when you have two big personalities. I don't like the idea of, you know, there's one thing that was pretty interesting. Uh, he also mentioned that there was like a late clause in his contract that he alleged that docked his pay um, and that he would be sent home or something like that without pay for the day if, if he was late. That does look hypocritical given how aggressively Steven went after certain like kind of penalties in the Daily Wire contract. I don't know if that's true or not, but also again, as a showrunner, look, I've said this before, you know, because I was late to Tim's show, he canceled it, you know, 
I under in the moment I was like, bro, who cares? But now I understand more, you know, like I understand, like you need people to be there on time to get ready for the show. And if somebody's like habitually late and just asking them to be on time, isn't good enough, you have to penalize them. So if it was, if he was showing up late all the time, which I don't know, um, I would understand why it's in the contract. I had that in a contract in my first big corporate America job because I kept, I had to start at eight 30 in the morning. I was still in my early twenties and I would party every night and, uh, you know, I was late all the time. And when I wanted to get, uh, I was at a, um, uh, um, I wanted to get to the VP level. Uh, I was a chief marketing officer at the time. And the owner flat out told me like, bro, you can't show up on time. So no, if you show up on time for like six months straight, we'll talk. And, uh, <laughs> I eventually just quit, quit. <laughs> but like, uh, I mean, it was my fault. And he had obviously gently reminded me multiple times about being on time uh, and it didn't work. So he put a financial put. So I'm not as blown away by that. The anger, the arguments, that doesn't look good. The saying, hey, let's keep it clean when Crowder certainly doesn't do that. That doesn't look good. But I think anytime you have an ex-employee coming out, it's not. I just support both of them. Okay. Some of these things don't make Crowder look great. Um but we're hearing it from the mouth of someone who is no longer an employee. Um, and let's not pretend that, you know, it's so out of the, out of the realm of possibility that Steven has a, a big ego. I, I've never experienced that, but I mean, the guys, it's called the Steven Crowder show, <laughs> you know? So I, maybe he does. Um, but you know, certainly, who who knows? Maybe the, the Blaze said, "Hey, you know, get out there and get in the headlines, promote your new show." Who knows? I like them both. I wish them both the best. Uh, to me, there's nothing like wild out of the line here. Um, you let me know in the comment section down below. This video was way longer than I expected it to be. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll talk to you again real soon.